Welcome to New Spring Daily. I wanted to give you an encouraging word today straight from Luke chapter 24, and it's about the issue of doubt. I think if we're all being honest, we would admit we've had some doubts during this season of life. You've probably doubted whether or not you should have invested money in a 401k or a Roth IRA. You may have doubted whether or not you'll ever get to go back to school or whether or not life will ever get back to normal or whether or not you'll ever be able to shake hands again or hug anybody ever again. I'm sure we've all doubted whether or not we're getting accurate information from uh, sources. Let me just talk a little bit today about what we do with our doubts because it's not a sin for doubt to come into your mind. The real question is what do we do with the doubts once they come into our heads, once they come into our world? Uh, Luke chapter 24, let me show you that on the day of the resurrection, the first Easter Sunday morning, Jesus' own disciples were filled with doubts and Jesus spoke directly to the issue of doubt. This is Luke 24, verse 36 and following. As they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood in their midst and Jesus said to them, peace to you. But they were startled and terrified and they thought they were seeing a ghost. Why are you troubled? He asked them. And why do doubts arise in your hearts? That's a very important question. Jesus is standing right there in front of them. He'd already promised them that he'd be raised from the dead, but yet they doubt. They're terrified. They're afraid. And the question is, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. Jesus actually offers them proof of his resurrection. And he says, it is myself Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see that I have. Having said this, he showed them his hands and feet, but while they were still amazed and in disbelief because of their joy, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? And so they gave him a piece of fish and he took it and he ate it in their presence. And then he told them, verse 44, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened his their minds and they understood. Now, I just want to point out to you what Jesus did here. Jesus did not ignore their doubts. Jesus helped them face their doubts by asking them a simple question. Why do doubts arise in your heart? The reason why we doubt God is because we're human. None of us are perfect. But when we doubt God, what we're really doubting is his ability to keep his promises. So either we don't know what his promises are, or we have read his promises before and we have forgotten those promises, or we do believe his promises, but sometimes we doubt whether or not we can believe them because our circumstances are so massive, so out of our control, so scary, so frightening. And I think we're all in that place at some point in our lives and all of us together are probably in that season right now. So I wanted just to point out to you what Jesus asked them to do. He said, touch me and see. Jesus offered them an actual proof of his resurrection. He offered his hands and his feet. They were, he wanted them to see the scars that he had bore in his body because of the crucifixion. The crazy thing about a crucifixion is no one survived ever. So the only person who could walk around with the scars in his hands and his feet from a crucifixion was a man who had gone through a resurrection. So Jesus is trying to help them move through their doubts. That's what I want to talk to you about for just a few moments right now. When Jesus asked them, why do doubts arise in your hearts? I want to say it to you this way. Your doubts may arise, but don't let them abide. When doubts arise, don't let them abide. In other words, don't let doubt take up residence in your heart. It's okay to not fully understand what God's up to. And it's okay to even have doubts about whether or not this is going to work out for your good. But don't stay there. It was Winston Churchill who said, if you find yourself going through hell, by all means, keep going, right? Right? You don't want to pitch your tent in the middle of the hell that you're going through. You want to move through it. It doesn't mean that you avoid a tough time. It doesn't mean that we just ignore our doubts. But what we do when we have doubts is we put our gaze on Jesus instead of maintaining our gaze on doubt. 
Doubt can come to you, but doubt doesn't have to stay in you. As a matter of fact, um, I would like to say it to you this way. Don't let doubts evolve. You should evict them. I know in my life, every time I've had a doubt about God, his word, his promises, what he's up to, if things are going to actually work out for my good and for God's glory and for our growth in Christ, I have this temptation to let the doubt take up residence. And if you let doubt stay in your life, it will evolve. Doubt will not get smaller if you leave it alone. Doubt will grow. Doubt will get bigger. Doubt will take root in your heart. So don't let doubt evolve. You must evict it. And how do we evict doubt? By seeing Jesus, by touching Jesus. That was the proof that Jesus offered to the disciples that day when they were afraid. He said, see me and touch me. Jesus doesn't want us just to kind of linger in a place of doubt and fear. Jesus wants us to embrace it fully. And then he wants to give us a full revelation of who he is, a vision of him where we can tangibly touch him, feel him. You know, we're a church. We say this in our vision statement, marked by the presence of God. The presence of Jesus in that room removed all doubt about the resurrection. So if you find yourself struggling with doubt, don't stay there. Evict the doubt. Read scripture, pray, worship, call a friend, confess that doubt to someone. Let them help pull you out. Borrow faith from another person. Don't let doubt maintain its foothold in your life. Move through it and see Jesus and touch Jesus and his presence can remove the power of doubt in your life. I hope this has been encouraging to you. It's a blessing to connect with you every day at New Spring Daily. Thank you for joining us for New Spring Daily. This content has been designed in a time when we are socially distant to be spiritually unified. We have a lot more resources that will help you and those you love at newspring.cc. So please swing by the website. And I specifically want to invite you that are checking us out for the first time to text NEW here to 30303. Until tomorrow, that's it from the New Spring Daily.